Now, from Faith Life Church, Gary Cassie and his Loyalty, Your Pathway to Promotion series. Today's message, Training for Your Destiny. Buckle your seatbelts, get your Bibles out. Let's get ready to roll here. Uh, we're talking about can God trust you or loyalty? And it uh, has a huge impact on where you're headed, friend. Huge impact. So we need to talk about that. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 says, Leaders must first be tested. And if there's nothing against them, let them serve as leaders, right? Now, when you test someone, it's not only the skill set you're looking for. Again, you learned this. We talked about this. What are we looking for, friend? Their submission. So you can learn a skill set, right? And uh, that doesn't necessarily show their heart. What you want to test is the heart. Are they going to stay submitted to the leader and to the assignment? We spent last week covering eight steps of disloyalty. Now, obviously, there's two paths. God has a path of promotion, and there's a path of destruction. I don't think anyone just jumps out there and says, you know, I'm going to put together a great plan to be disloyal. I don't think that's actually what happens. I think people are deceived. I think they fall into this trap. I think they don't know their heart. And so we need to make sure you can recognize this because your future depends on it and the future of many others. So let's review quickly eight steps. What's the first one? Get your notes out. The independent spirit, what does that look like? You know, you give them an instruction, they add to it, take away from it, change it, decide when to do it, right? You say paint it blue, they, they, they paint it black. You know, they kind of do it, they kind of, you know, you know what I'm talking about. They want to add their twist. They don't follow it exactly as has been instructed. They have an independent spirit. And if that is not challenged with correction or instruction, what happens many times they don't receive correction. They become, step number two, offended. Offended, offended, offended. And then offended people become, step number three, passive. They began to withdraw. They get upset. They get offended. They disengage. Uh, then they become passive. And then they become critical. They have a front row seat to everything. They're viewing everything through their critical eyes. Uh, everything that they see is now validating their complaints and it gets worse. They then become political. They begin to try to justify their opinions, their viewpoints with others around them. They draw people around them. Again, we covered this in depth last week. They cover people around them, and then they enter a very dangerous phase because up until this point, we can still reach this person, but now they step into the stage of deception. As I said, deceived people do not know they are deceived. So now if you try to correct them, they don't receive it because they're right, you're wrong. They've made that decision. And then this leads to an open rebellion against their leader. And then we know what happens to rebels in the end. Our last step, number eight, is the execution phase. Rebels always die in the end because they attract rebels. That same spirit is now in their followers and we have problems. Now we don't want this for you. God does not want this for you. Now how do you stop this cycle? Everyone say correction and instruction. So I'm going to, I'm going to name this, this uh, session, can God trust you to be corrected? Back when I was in second grade, I lived in Columbus, Clintonville to be exact, and I was in a gang. I was, in a, I was in a gang. We had our little bicycles, had about four or five of us, and I would run the back alleys, and I would, we would steal stuff. We had a little saying back then with our gang that if it's in the back of the alley, they don't want it, it's trash, and so we might as well take it, right? Of course, in Clintonville, the garages are right there at the alley, so we would just have a little saying, well, I bet that's trash, let's take it. I bet that's trash. And my mother didn't know what I was doing. But anyway, one day, you know, who can remember back in the day when the transistor radios were big? Portable trans, I mean, I, that was a big deal back then. And, you know, my dad had one, I wanted one. And driving down the alley, I heard music playing. I looked in the backyard, there is a transistor radio sitting on a blanket playing music. No one around. Must be trash. <laughs> right? So I grabbed it, took it home. I hid it from my mother. I would listen to it at night in the bedroom at night trying to go to sleep. I'd turn it on. 
she discovered I had it, and she made me march down to that house, give it back, repent to the owner face to face. And uh, so everyone say, thank God for my mom. I was not heading down the road that God wanted me to head down, right? And she was wise enough to make me go down and face them face to face instead of just taking it down there. And uh, of course, that was a traumatic experience having to go through that through a little three, you know, third grader. But uh, I never, obviously, I've not forgotten it. And so I thank God for correction. So can God trust you with correction? You see, you have a destiny. It's bigger than you, bigger than you. And, uh, you know, your ability is not going to have the strength and wisdom to get there and handle it. Uh, your your skill set has to be honed. But more importantly, your ability and willingness to submit to God has to be trained. Obedience must be tested before that happens. God starts small. He leads with glimpses and dreams. He leads you on a journey of preparation. I can remember back in the, the uh, WCVO days, our church started at WCVO radio station, if you didn't know that. And, uh, you know, it was a great place to start. One day, uh, well, I mean, I, one day I was praying there in service, and the Lord spoke to me and said that I would be doing radio and television someday. That was crazy. I mean, I never even thought about that, didn't want to think about it, knew zero about it. And it wasn't only about a month or so later, the, uh, the, the, the radio station had a, a show that was about marriage, this couple. It was an hour-long show. They had call-ins, and they talked and, you know, taught on marriage. They had a huge fight on the air. <laughs> so the radio manager took them off and called us and said, would you and Drenda want to take over the uh, marriage broadcast? So for a year and a half on Tuesday nights, we would drive down from Mount Vernon. We were building our house at the time. We would stop construction and we would drive down to the radio station and we would teach on marriage and we would take phone calls and it was a good break uh, for us, to, for our own relationship, but it was also a learning experience about radio and media. And so, you know, God starts you, but you have to say yes. He, he, you have to say yes. We launched television. I won't tell you all the details. You've heard it before, but that was really scary to start television. We knew nothing about TV, but to, God spoke to me one day. We were building the Now Center where we're sit, seated right now, and we would go to churches in the area and look at how they built their buildings as we were designing our building here. One day, we went to a church that was doing a Sunday morning TV broadcast, and as I was walking through the hall, looking at the building, their room where they had their TV equipment was open. The door was open. And as I walked by it, all of a sudden, the anointing of God came on me so strong, it could hardly stand up. And the Lord said, you'll have this. You're going to have the same thing. Now, if you're like me, I didn't know what all those dials and lights and all that was, all that electronic equipment, but I knew I would have it. I was so overwhelmed by the presence of God, I left the tour, went down into the car, and had to sit there for about an hour just God was speaking to me. So we came back. Again, I won't tell you the whole story. We launched television. That was a, a, a more courage than faith. Took both, but it took, it took, it took both, but it was courage. It takes courage. Our airtime at the time, we started as $9,000 a month. I remember thinking, I even called Drenda once on the phone and said, Drenda, I don't know, how are we going to pay $9,000 a month in airtime? when we're building the Now Center. I mean, money is being spent before we even get it, right? I mean, it's just, how are we going to do that? But the TV ministry kept growing. Opportunities kept coming up. More stations wanted our broadcast. And then uh, one night, Drenda was here. We were having prayer, and our team was praying. And Amy began to prophesy to me. And here was the words she spoke, words of the Lord to me. The harvest is too big for you. I am stretching you. How many love to be stretched? How do you stretch a balloon? Everyone say the word pressure. Pressure changes your capacity. I am stretching you. Only by my spirit can you understand what is about to happen. Will you step out? Let me lead you to hard things beyond your understanding the impossible. Wow. Wow. Now, we'd seen enough and had been, been trained enough to know to answer that with a yes. As you know, as you attend here at Faith Life, I tell you, always say yes, figure it out later. 
Because if God says it, he already has the figure it out part done, <laughs> right? <laughs> so uh, it was probably, I don't know, a month later, we get a phone call where we we're offered a daily television spot. We are currently just doing weekly and five days is extremely expensive and our bills are now jumping significantly. And they said, you'll probably fall behind on the first month or so because, you know, you got to adjust more people watching. Well, we were six months down the road and we were a half million dollars behind on our airtime bill. Now, the name of the program is Fixing Your Money Thing. I knew that could not continue. That was not integrity. And I, I was nervous about it. I didn't know. I said, well, we have to drop off. You know, I don't, I can't live there being behind on television when my whole ministry is about having financial integrity, right? Well, we went away that week and we prayed. Drenda encouraged me. I, I was getting nervous about it. I have to be honest with you. But I came back from that trip uh, after praying and I had a dream in the night where I saw your names. I saw piles, I saw piles of checks. I saw your names. I saw amounts in the checks. That weekend was just a normal weekend. We did not make an appeal for the money. But that half million dollars came in on that normal weekend. We paid the television bill, praise the Lord, and have been current ever since. Our price now, we're spending $250,000 a month on TV airtime. And so here's the, here's the moral of the story. God starts you small. You have to train for the big. Right now, today, you're training for your future destiny. 